If I was forced to pinpoint a specific time when TV was at its absolute finest, I'd probably end up saying that the late 70s or early 80s were the very best. Truly, it was a golden era for television. Big stars on even bigger shows. And when I think back to that period of time, I'm not sure there was any bigger show than Dallas. Premiering during the spring of 1978, Dallas told the story of a wealthy and feuding Texas family, the Ewings. The show was all about the family's oil company and cattle ranching with a whole bunch of lying, cheating, and other shenanigans mixed in for good measure. While Larry Hagman quickly became the breakout star of the show, the entire cast was really good, including Charlene Tilton, who played Lucy Ewing, JR's promiscuous niece whose parents Gary and Valene had been forced to leave the ranch. Their move to California was chronicled in the Dallas sequel, Knott's Landing, which, like Dallas, ran for 14 seasons on CBS. For a teenager watching Dallas, it seemed like all of the actors on the show had it made. I assumed the fame and fortune that came along with a role in a hit primetime television series like Dallas could be used to measure the challenges and obstacles faced by those stars. In other words, I felt like they were lucky, and probably had been lucky their entire lives. Little did I know that things hadn't been easy, at least for one of Dallas's stars. Yep, I'm talking about Charlene Tilton, who as a very young girl had found herself in foster care. And then by the time that she was 15, she was fending for herself, living on her own. My own mother found herself in a similar situation at roughly the same age, and I know from listening to her talk about her experiences, just how tough things can get. Things that most of us take for granted, like food on the table, a roof over our heads. Well, they were no guarantee for my mother or for Charlene. And yet Charlene persisted. She didn't give up. She couldn't. She went to school and did the best that she could to make ends meet. And as she'd walk to school each day, she would often detour past the studio lots and just watch for a few minutes daydream if you will. She'd stick around as long as she could hoping to see someone famous and then race off to school only partially daring to dream about what a life might be like if she were lucky enough to be one of those people that the security guards allowed past the gates. At some point during those high school years Charlene met Larry Hagman and somehow managed to strike up a conversation with the well-known star of I Dream of Jeannie. The two connected, and from what I can tell, Hagman started to keep an eye on Charlene. He knew she wanted to be an actress, and when she was 17, he was there rooting for her as she auditioned for the role of Lucy Ewing. Of course, the rest is history. Even if you weren't a fan of the show, you know about Dallas. The show was a pop culture phenomenon here in the U.S., and it was equally as popular in many other parts of the world. And as the show became more popular, Charlene herself became quite a celebrity. And before you knew it, she was on the cover of many popular magazines here in the States. She also dabbled in music. And while her single, Say La Vie, didn't chart here in the U.S., it found greater success internationally, I've been told. Of course, you really know that you've made it when you're offered a chance to host Dick Clark's New Year's Rocky Eve, which, if you ask me, is still the best way to ring in the new year even if Mr. Clark himself is no longer around. Charlene also made the obligatory guest spots on shows like Love Boat and Fantasy Island. Heck, she even hosted that infamous episode of Saturday Night Live that got comedian Charles Rocket fired for dropping the F-bomb on live TV. Quick side note here, just look at this season 4 episode of The Love Boat that Charlene appeared in. Holy cow, look at that lineup! This right here, folks, is why The Love Boat was such a fun show to watch. All right, getting back to Larry and Charlene. Of course, by the time the whole Who Shot JR thing rolled around, it seemed like Hagman was one of the biggest stars in the world. But despite that fame and Larry's penchant for partying, he never lost track of the young girl that he had helped catch a break. Yes, he and Charlene remained incredibly close, and they would remain great friends throughout the remainder of Hagman's life. When Hagman passed away in November of 2012, Charlene said this, Larry was a father figure to me. He and his wife were two of the most wonderful people. I think about him a lot. And I know it might sound kind of hocus pocusy, but I still feel his presence. 
You see, folks, the truth about Charlene's relationship with Larry Hagman is that it was a very special one. And even though Larry has passed away, she still feels the impact of his kindness and encouragement that he offered up so very long ago. So with that said, just in case you're wondering, here's what Charlene's been up to. I guess it's fair to say that Charlene has always had a ton of fond feelings about the years that she spent with her Dallas family, and in 2004, she reunited with her castmates to reminisce about her time on the show. When the show was revived in 2012, Charlene made a handful of appearances on that show, which ran for three seasons on the TNT network here in the States. And if we go just a little further back in time, I feel like I'm obligated to mention that Charlene single-handedly sold hundreds of thousands of abdominizers, which was a piece of molded plastic that somehow magically made sit-ups easier. And as a result, six-pack abs were just a measly $20 away. I never bought one, maybe I should have. My stomach is more of a keg than anything else these days. Moving away from infomercials to something way more commendable, Charlene spends a great deal of time these days giving of herself in her time. She truly is trying to find ways to pay it forward. Pictured above is a clip that I found on YouTube where they talk about her efforts to help raise money for children who are currently in the foster program here in the United States. And Charlene is also a board member of Actors for Autism and can frequently be found helping lead workshops designed to make these people, folks on the autistic spectrum, feel like inclusion in the entertainment industry can be a reality and not just a dream. Another project, if I dare call it that, that Charlene has been working on for decades now is her very talented daughter, Cherish, who is both an actress and a singer. If I had to pick a favorite song from her most recent album, I'd suggest you give Ones You Leave Behind a spin. I don't know if it is or not, but the song sounds very autobiographical. Getting back to Dallas, if you'd like to revisit the lives of the Ewing clan, you can do so on Amazon's IMDb TV offering, where you can currently watch seasons 2 through 14 for free if you're willing to put up with a few ads. However, if you dislike ads as much as I do, you can always pick up the DVDs. I know, I know, kind of old school, but when the internet goes down from time to time, it's nice to have something to watch. And The Legacy of Dallas is a pretty darn good way to spend a few hours, or days. That show can be pretty darn addictive. Yep, hours of fun can be had thanks to great performances by Patrick Duffy, Victoria Principal and the guy who extended his hand of friendship to Charlene Tilton oh so many years ago, Larry Hagman. I doubt that he knew the impact that he would have on Charlene when decades ago he befriended that young lady and became something of a surrogate father to her. But that's what makes life so sweet. The little ripples that our acts of kindness can have on the lives of others out there on that big ocean of life that we all navigate. Well, they're endless and truthfully, you never know how much good you can do. All right, I'm done being sappy. Let's close with an image from Circus of the Stars. The feller to the left of Charlene is going to throw all sorts of pointy objects at her, and she's going to have to hold very, very still if she wants to stick around for the applause. Man, I really love that show. You can watch this clip and a whole bunch more right here on YouTube. So when you get tired of watching Dallas on IMDb TV, you now have something else to watch as well. Okay. Now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section while you're at it. I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.